Cancer affects everyone. Today, we learn more about the gift to the Queen's Cancer Research Institute that has the potential to transform cancer research across Canada and the world. Morning, everyone. Such an expectant looking crowd. Thank you very much for joining us this morning for an extraordinarily meaningful announcement. Uh, meaningful not just for our Queen's community, uh, but also for the world far beyond our campus. Uh, to begin, I'd like to acknowledge that Queen's is situated on traditional Anishinaabe and Haudenosaunee territory. We're grateful to be able to live, to work, and to learn on these lands. To acknowledge this traditional territory is to recognize its longer history, one predating the establishment of the earliest European colonies. And it is also to acknowledge this territory's significance for the indigenous peoples who lived and continue to live upon it, and whose practices and spiritualities were tied to the land and continue to develop in relationship with the territory and its other inhabitants today. We are very honored to be joined today by Cara and Marie Sinclair, who are here because of their extraordinary commitment to Queens and their personal devotion to communities and the well being of communities across the country. Murray is a proud alumnus holding a Bachelor of Commerce from the Smith School of Business and has more than three decades of experience in the business world, most recently as Chief Investment Officer for Elston Investments Corporation, a private investment company. Kara is a veteran volunteer who has dedicated her life to improving the welfare of at-risk, often homeless youth in Vancouver, something for which she was awarded British Columbia's Medal of Good Citizenship in 2021, an award that recognizes British Columbians who have acted in a particularly generous, kind, or selfless manner for the common good without expectation of reward. With Murray's keen business sense and Kara's experience founding a registered charity, they are indeed a formidable team. Together, they are philanthropists who want to make a difference. And with today's announcement, they are going to make a transformational difference in cancer research in this country. Now, before we get to the announcement, I'd like to give you some idea of the context for the magnitude of Kara and Murray's gift. Three years ago, there was a story in the Queen's Alumni Review about the Canadian Cancer Trials Group, which is, of course, headquartered at the Queen's Cancer Research Institute. The review interviewed Dr. Uh, Janet Dancy, the director of the Trials Group, and a professor in the Department of Oncology. And she said, if there is a cure for cancer, Queen's will have a role in it. That is Dr. Dancy. And today, thanks to the generosity of the Sinclairs, I think we are coming much closer to Dr. Dancy's prediction becoming a reality. With today's announcement, in other words, I think we are all positioned to have increased hope. Queen's having a role in finding a cure for cancer is not really a question at all, because today's announcement makes clear that our researchers are in the vanguard of cancer research, not just in Canada, but in the world. And through this announcement, they will have unprecedented support to continue their groundbreaking work. And this is very much in keeping with Queen's strategic framework, which advances a vision, mission, and values that empower us to take on some of the world's most significant challenges. This is part of our sense, our communal sense, of social responsibility, of our optimism, and of our belief, of course, in a better tomorrow. I needn't remind everyone there are many, many challenges in the world today, uh, but there are few which touch us all so universally as cancer. All of us have felt the shadow of cancer fall upon our lives in one form or another. I lost my own brother to cancer 52 years ago and have reflected recently on what the outcome might have been after 52 years of extraordinary research in this area, how differently we might be all situated. 
Cancer research has an impact on the lives of so many. It obviously can't be done, done alone. It is a joint enterprise involving researchers, institutions, and donors. So this is why I am delighted formally to introduce Cara and Murray Sinclair, who have stepped forward to collaborate with Queen's University and our researchers to advance the work of the Queen's Cancer Research Institute. Cara and Murray have committed $25 million to support cancer research here at Queen's. This gift will have an incredible impact on not only cancer research, but also on how we deliver cancer care. Their investment will help Queen's researchers discover new potential treatments, test new drugs, and better understand the value of treatment for patients. I'd now like to invite Dean Jane Philpott up onto the platform for an unveiling. In recognition of this generous gift, I am delighted to announce that the Queen's Cancer Research Institute will be renamed the Kara and Murray Sinclair Cancer Research Institute, also to be known as the Sinclair Cancer Research Institute. Ready, Jane? This is the only research center in Canada that brings together experts from three key cancer disciplines, cancer biology and genetics, clinical trials through the Canadian uh, Cancer Trials Group, and cancer epidemiology. From basic science research, to testing new drugs, to evaluating the impact of treatments, the Sinclair Cancer Research Institute will take cancer research from bench to bedside and back. It is very rare to have this breadth of research in one institution, and we will now build on that unique foundation by enhancing research, improving training, and launching new programs that will position the Sinclair Cancer Research Institute to be a leader in cancer research on the world stage. Please join me in watching a short film about the impact of this gift. Without cell therapy or immunotherapy, I would not. Be sitting here. Cell therapies are living drugs. They are manufactured from a patient's own immune blood cells, engineered to make those cells recognize the cancer and more effectively target and destroy their cancer cells. For some people with certain types of cancers, it's resulting in cures where nothing else has worked for them. One of the hardest things about the CAR-T was being away, traveling out of town, different country, away from family. In the time that Kath had cancer, we were probably away over 200 days. If you think about that, when you've got kids. For it to be localized would have made all, a huge difference. It's really very important that we understand where our immune cells go and how they behave in the body. When a medicine doesn't work, we're not sure whether that's because it didn't go to the right place or because it's the wrong medicine. So to have a facility that allows us to pick and choose which microscope to use for any given cancer is incredibly powerful. Science does a really good job of measuring the number of days in a person's life, but it doesn't always do the best job of measuring the life within those days. The Cancer Research Institute is important because they really care about the patient perspective in their research. Ultimately, patients are looking for treatments that will help them live longer lives and better lives. And so we're interested in understanding how patients balance these things like overall survival and quality of life with the side effects that we know come with our treatments. I, I think there's tremendous potential to improve on existing 
cancer immunotherapies and I, I see the gift as really allowing us to further that research. We're really kind of building momentum and more people outside of Kingston and outside of Queens will know about the cancer research that's happening here. The foundation that we are building now with cell therapy research has the potential to impact many people around Canada and across the world. This will be a cure for cancer. So now I would like to call upon Kara and Murray to join us on stage to tell you a little bit about their commitment to cancer research and to Queen's. Kara, Murray, please. Thank you, Patrick. Uh, Kara and I are experiencing a mix of emotions today but we want everyone to know how pleased we are to be here and how honored we are to play a role in supporting such important work. Cancer really has touched all of us, whether we have faced the frightening diagnosis ourselves or watched someone we love facing it. It is estimated that an average of 675 people in Canada will be diagnosed with cancer every day. I'll say that again, every day. And the impact of this is devastating. We know because cancer has touched our lives too. Both of Kara's parents were diagnosed with cancer and just a few. We lost my brother. To uh, glioblastoma, which many people in this community would understand because it's the same form of aggressive brain cancer that Gord Downey had. Sadly, our loss is not unique. Cancer crosses all lines, all cultures, race, and religion, but its universality is what can bring hope. It affects everyone, everywhere. So it can also bring us together to beat it. Because cancer affects all of us, we have a common goal. We all have a stake in it, and we understand how critical it is to act. We are all touched by cancer, and because of that, we can find the collective strength and motivation to do something about it. And we know that's why everyone has joined us here today, to do something about it. For us, that means honoring the memory of my brother and all the others we have lost to this terrible disease. It also means bringing people and the best minds together. It means supporting the groundbreaking research that is happening right here at Queen's. We hope you will join us in whatever capacity you are able so that we can inspire others to take up our cause and join our journey to a world that is cancer free. Thanks to research here at Queen's, the roadmap for that journey is already well underway. And if we continue to work together to believe we'll reach our destination faster, we will, and we'll get there faster than anybody ever thought possible. Thank you very much.
Thank you, Karen Murray, for those words, for this gift, and for the inspiration you provide to us all. Thank you. We are now going to discuss the impact of the gift uh, in a panel discussion led by Dr. Jane Philpott, uh, Dean of Queen's Health Science. So I'd invite uh, Dean Philpott up onto the platform along with Dr. Paul Cubes, uh, Canada Excellence Research Chair in Immunophysiology and Immunotherapy, Kathy and Dave Tidman, cancer survivor and school teacher and patient advocate, Dr. Annette Hay, senior investigator with the cancer, Canadian Cancer Trials Group, uh, also hematologist and clinician scientist, and Dr. Andrew Craig, director of Queen's Cancer Research, Research Institute. Please, come on up. Good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today here in person or online. As Principal Dean said, my name is Jane Philpott, and I have the privilege of serving as the Dean of Queen's Health Sciences. It is a great honor to moderate this important discussion where we explore the significance of Murray and Kara Sinclair's generous contribution to cancer research and how it will impact cancer research here at Queen's and well beyond. So I have some questions for our panelists and I'm going to start with Dr. Andrew Craig, who is the director of the Sinclair Cancer Research Institute. Dr. Craig, let's start with a big picture perspective. How will this gift impact cancer research and cancer care? Yeah, thanks so much, Jane. Um, it's tremendous to be here today. I'd um, like to thank the Sinclair family for this very generous gift. Um, I, I would say it's going to uh, have a major impact by growing our capabilities for cancer research. We're uh, planning to build new facilities that will really be cutting edge um, to try to improve the way we can kind of visualize cancer, uh, treat cancer, um, as well as ensure that there's um, appropriate uh, levels of value in treatments. Um, and uh, we also plan to do this while encouraging more trainees to come through and kind of build their resumes and, and build their experience uh, in a way that no other facilities can. So we're uh, looking to do a lot of things and, and, and I think many people in this room are, are the ones that will be uh, picking up this torch and, and uh, trying to uh, do as much as we can, of course, to, to better lives uh, of patients with cancer. Thanks, Andrew. Let me turn now to Dr. Annette Hay, who's just beside me here. Annette, you know that this gift will include investments toward a biomanufacturing facility to develop new immunotherapies, a groundbreaking approach to cancer treatment. In general terms, can you tell us what immunotherapy is and how it works? Yeah, and it's so exciting to be part of today. It's a bittersweet day, for sure. Um, this is a fantastic day of excitement and hope and promise, but tied with what everybody has gone through in one form or another, where they've lost somebody, and what really drives us to keep moving forward to try to do better. So immune therapy, it is a proven way to treat cancer that is highly effective in some cancers for some people. And one of the really big reasons to smile is the people in this room who are here today um, because of that. And there are various different types of immune therapies. We are testing many of them in Canadian cancer trials group studies right now. But they don't work for everybody and they don't work all of the time. And we have a lot of research to do to understand why, understand how to develop new therapies that may work better for more people. And cell therapy is a specific type of immune therapy that sounds like science fact, but it is, or sounds like science fiction, but it is science fact, where we take um, some, a small number of immune cells from a patient with cancer, fly them to a manufacturing facility where they are engineered to make them recognize the person's cancer. Then they're flown back to their hospital where they're reinfused back into the body. And they are resulting in 
apparent cures for some people with certain types of leukemia and lymphoma. That's the type of research that this gift is going to enable us to move forward and advance more quickly. That's wonderful. And it's a real honor to have David and Kathy Tidman here with us today. And Kathy is one of those people that you talked about, uh, Annette, who has benefited from uh, CAR T cell therapy. Kathy, as a patient of Dr. Hay, can you tell us about the fact that you had to travel to Cleveland, I believe, to get your CAR T cell therapy because it wasn't available here in Canada. What would it mean to patients and families to have local access to this personalized treatment? It will be um, an abs absolute game changer for not only patients, but their caregiver and their families. Um, we were in a situation, it was the summer of 2019, um, our children were old enough to understand why we were leaving their late teens, early 20s. Um, with our jobs, we were also in a position to be able to go. Um, but that whole aspect of, of being away from home for, um, like Annette was saying, a, 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 we were a week in Cleveland to get my chemo and my cells extracted and then back home to wait for eight weeks for them to be sent away. And then back to Cleveland for another six weeks, again, for more chemo and, the, and receiving the, the CAR T cells. Um, so in that time, you're, you're away from home, you're away from your family, you're away from your support network, and it's hard. It's hard on you, and it's, it's hard on the caregiver who there was nobody else there but, but Dave. Um, so while I was asleep and recovering, um, you know, Dave had, had no one else. So it's that absence of, of family support network, your home, you're not, you were, we were sleeping in a hotel room, um, provided by part of the Cleveland Clinic. Um, but uh, just it will be a game changer for families who, who don't, have maybe the, the means that, that we were with our jobs. I, I can't imagine people self-employed who would have to leave for weeks at a time or who have young children who might not understand. So we fortunately were in a situation where um, our family understood and yeah, this, this will be a remarkable, remarkable um, situation for families in the future. Thank you very much for sharing that with us. Uh, we're really excited that this gift is coinciding with the arrival of Dr. Paul Koops to the Queen's community as our new Canada Excellence Research Chair. And part of the gift, uh, Paul, is going to help with an imaging facility that you are going to be establishing. How is this going to help cancer research? So, um, Jane, I'm a really bad fisherman. <laughs> I throw my lure in and I hope it works, but I can't see what's going on under the water. And I think that in cancer we have a similar problem. We make these T cells and we hope they get to that site and we hope that they work and we hope they kill the tumor. And um, sometimes they don't and we don't understand why. And if we could understand why, then the next time they would work. And so we've developed a way of looking under the water and being able to see what the fish are eating and now use the right lures. And so by the same token, as we develop our imaging in immunotherapy, we'll be able to track these immune cells, see if they're going to the tumor. If they are, are they helping the tumor or are they killing the tumor? And that way we'll be able to understand which immunotherapy works and which immunotherapy doesn't work. So th this, this gift has you know, allowed me to come here to Queens and really do some of the uh, big science that we've always wanted to do. That's Thank very you. exciting. What are the future possibilities as immunotherapy becomes even more advanced? What do you dream of for our future? I'll go to you again. So, so I, think, um, I, I think immunotherapy um, is going to help us in many diseases. Uh, I think the immune system is involved in many different kinds of cancers. Right now, we're only treating uh, a limited number, so it will help us expand our array of 
T cells to tackle different uh, stubborn cancers, if you will. Uh, but then in addition to that, there are other f forms of diseases, autoimmunity and various other mm -hmm. things that I think uh, modifying T cells will help us to treat uh, terrible inflammatory bowel disease, for example, or, or, um, or things like um, multiple sclerosis. So these are all uh, you know, on the horizon and that's what really excites me is, uh, is what comes next will be really exciting. That's great, and it's going to be wonderful to have those facilities right here at Queen's. Uh, Annette, maybe I'll ask you the same thing in terms of this putting Queen's at the forefront of pioneering cancer immunology and immunotherapy. How do you think that these facilities, and maybe even the, the work that you're doing and the work that Paul's doing, how is that going to work in tandem to help revolutionize cancer research? It's one of the most fun things about working at Queen's is the genuine collaboration across disciplines, across programs, across departments. And it's the way you make progress when you see how someone else thinks and how you might apply that to the work you're doing. And we do that not just locally, but also in collaboration with the national network and international partners. Um, this gift at Queen's, we're already team players. This helps us play even better and score even more goals together <laughs> with the team. And specifically, the part of this donation that will support the biomanufacturing facility, um, this is a big, long-term ambitious goal. It's a big project, but this donation launches us off the start line to build on all the work we've already done, the partnerships we've got, and literally and figuratively build it out to achieve our shared vision. So this is gonna be, this is gonna be really meaningful, really impactful. That's fantastic. And of course, our research here at Queen's is very much linked into our education work as well and our training of future scientists. Andrew, maybe I can turn to you to tell us a little bit about how this gift will be used to advance education. Yeah, so we're, we're planning to, to really uh, improve our training uh, facilities and uh, build a training program that really does connect um, students uh, with mentors that again, come from different disciplines. Uh, we could have um, kind of fundamental cancer science uh, supervisor along with a clinician scientist in, in that area as well. And, and so really trying to build um, a, a, a place where, where people will increasingly uh, continue to come for training and uh, hopefully leave here with some of the best uh, experience possible and really become those kind of generational change makers so we're, we're really looking for this to have a legacy, a legacy in the people that we train. And I think for all the scientists in the room that do this and mentor students, uh, it's by far the most rewarding part of the job, uh, just to know that you had some small positive influence and um, that uh, the students are leaving here with uh, much more knowledge, much more inspiration than they had before. Thank you, and I'm, I'm looking at many of our uh, graduate students out there, I'm sure they're all quite excited about being able to work in these new facilities and the uh, research they will be able to do there. So our, our time is short, but I want to give Dave the last question. So Dave, you've been sitting there quietly listening to all this. as, Which as is rare. <laughs> <laughs> and as, as Kathy's partner here, you've thought a lot about this, I know. Uh, the investment in these research facilities is really going to foster tremendous discovery in the area of cell therapy. What are your thoughts about this groundbreaking work happening right here in Kingston and its potential impact? Well, since Kathy was sick, I've screamed it from the rooftops that Kingston and this area is, um, we don't brag enough about what's here and what we're capable of doing. This is world-class stuff and thank you specifically to jump that for us. Um, unfortunately, we're, we test drove a lot of different places to have care, Cleveland, Toronto, Ottawa, Kingston, and I believe that Kingston was by far the best of, of what we had in the research, and Annette was uh, a dog on a bone, making sure Kath got the stuff she needed. Uh, but you know, they say speed kills, but not in cancer research. Speed saves, right? Mm. So, a simple one was when they took out Kath's T cells, it was eight weeks, right? And what you don't understand is that when you're in this case, your cancer's on fire. It's not going slow, it's not whatever. Those, 
every second counts. And the waiting in between those times while you're watching the tumors grow and you're watching your loved one get sicker and you know, I only have one cast, right? She's the only one I got. And you're looking at her and you're like, how can we speed this? What can we do? And this bio facility can change the time it takes and even how, how it will, you know, every cancer has a marker on it. And, you know, she can put up her little sign and this little T cell with the, you know, with the missile on it will know that's Kathy's. Well, we're going to get that one, right? And to be able to speed that up, you know, unfortunately, we spent a lot of time in hospitals and we saw a lot of people that had it taken out and didn't, didn't make it even to get the CAR-T, right? And so to be able to speed that up and have the research facility here, like it's real people and real lives that will be saved here. And that I thank you guys just from the bottom of my heart. Thanks. Well, I want to thank our panelists for coming to give us just a glimpse of the insights of the important impact of this gift. And once again, uh, I know that everyone in the room and those watching online are grateful to Kara and Marie Sinclair for this incredible gift which makes this research possible and is going to change the future of people across the country and even around the world. For those of you who are here in the room, I invite you now to join us for a celebration right here in the atrium. We're going to have uh, some uh, refreshments and then there is an open house taking place over at the Sinclair Cancer Research Institute just across the street here uh, near Botterill Hall and they will be showing you on uh, opportunities there about the cancer research that's currently taking place. There are people who will have Sinclair Cancer Research Institute t-shirts I believe so follow them and the, they will show you the way I want to thank everyone who has come here to join us in our online and in-person audience. What a wonderful day for Queens and for the country and cancer research around the world. Thank you very much.